Think the Wings for Life World Run is only about running? Far from it. We have an adventurer who risks his life to sail the globe. A young woman who endears herself to the whole world with her courageous effort and inspirational individuals who have fought their way back from spinal cord injury and work tirelessly towards the day when a cure is found. You don't want to miss these five unforgettable Wings for Life World Run moments. For our runner-up moment, we have to travel around the globe. It is the adventure of a lifetime. Ultra runner Christian Schiester and his girlfriend Daniela are setting out to sail around the world in seven years and to run the Wings for Life World Run on Cocos Island, probably the loneliest place on Earth. But the obstacles on the journey are enormous. Rund um uns bilden sich in kurzer Zeit lokale Stürme. Wir müssen uns also auf das Schlimmste gefasst machen. Du weißt nie, ob du deine Freunde jemals wieder siehst. Du weißt nicht, ob du jemals wieder zurückkommen wirst. On his quest, he takes on the challenge of the great oceans. Daddy, Mittagessen! And himself, always with one focus, not to miss the Wings for Life World Run, even if the way is hard. I must say, it is already very hard on the border. With 10 days and nights, only fighting and fear, fighting against the wind. It is feeling as if we are going to the south of the sea. Ah! You, me, you! After 31 days and nights on the high seas, it's done. The Cocos Keeling Islands. Let's go, Christian. Three, two, one, lauf. Cocos Keeling is part of Australia, but the small atoll is more than a thousand kilometers away from the mainland. You will look in vain for other people here. Viermal bin ich um die Insel gelaufen. 12,8 Kilometer weißer Sand, Steine und quer durch den Urwald. Das virtuelle Catcher Car hat mich dann mitten in der Nacht endlich erlöst. The Wings for Life World Run is the cherished project that he definitely doesn't want to miss. Ja, es war ein mehr schwieriger Weg daher. Mehr als 3000 Seemeilen, wo wir öfters mal dem Tode ins Auge schauen mussten. Dann da anzukommen und äh, nach dem Welt dran zu laufen, das ist halt schon ein Zuckerlein emotionales, wo ich mir denke, äh, der Hauptgrund, warum wir das machen, ist ja, um von Welt dran zu Welt dran zu segeln. Und äh, wenn der Weg dorthin sehr mühsam ist, ist das Rennen selbst natürlich eine Aufgabe. Und, äh, äh, noch ein bisschen ein besseres Gefühl, als wenn man in irgendeiner Stadt läuft, glaube ich. Our next moment takes us to Sweden, to a special athlete with a fighting spirit. You know, when I was a kid, I had like the best childhood ever. I, you know, I played sports with my brothers and it, it was all good until I was uh, seven years old. And when I was sitting in the car, I got a pain in my bottom. And a few weeks after that, the doctors find the cancer tumor in my lower back. After about a year, I had surgery to remove the cancer. And that surgery also destroyed a lot of nerves going to my legs. And since that day, I'm in a wheelchair. Aaron Anderson, now 33, decided not to be resigned to his fate. He sees himself as an adventurer. Limits do not seem to exist for this man with spinal cord injury. I got challenged by a friend to actually climb Mount Kebnekaise, the highest mountain in Sweden. So I did it by going up there with kind of crutches and crawling a little bit and pulling myself up with my arms. And I had to find all these ways to do it. I want to prove that, I mean, whatever your situation is, you can, you can still follow your dreams and, and do the stuff you actually want to do. Perhaps one of Aaron's biggest goals, to heighten awareness for spinal cord research through the Wings for Life World Run. And in typical Aaron Anderson style, it goes like this. When I did a, the Wings for Life World Run, I went down there hoping to do, do a good time and I, I ended up winning the Swedish division, which was such a great feeling. And the thing as well that 
it raises money for the research about spinal cord injuries. That's just an awesome bonus. Those who knew Aaron sensed that winning his home race in Sweden would not be enough for him. He wanted to go all the way to the top. His next destination? Dubai. Where there are wide and, above all, flat roads on which it is particularly easy to roll. Whenever I'm in a tough spot, having a really hard time, I'm thinking about the kids in the hospital that are fighting. And when I think about that, that gives me energy, because I know I can go a little bit more. I know I can go a little bit longer, harder, faster, whatever it takes to achieve my goal. And Aaron Anderson wouldn't be Aaron Anderson if he didn't fulfill this dream. Two years after his victory in Sweden, he crowns himself the global champion with an incredible distance of 92.14 kilometers. And this is the moment when Aaron Anderson writes history and writes record books beyond belief. Yeah! Yes! Thanks to everybody putting on this race for spinal cord injury. It's tough to be in a wheelchair sometimes. It can be really, really, really hard. I don't know if I'd be able to walk one day, but that could be pretty cool. For our next moment, we head off to Canada to meet former freestyle ski pro Mike Shaw. On December 16th, 2013, life as I knew it changed in an instant. During a routine training day, I had a tragic skiing accident that left me paralyzed from the neck down. At the time, I was a complete quadriplegic. I couldn't move or feel anything below my neck, and it looked like it would probably stay that way. Mike's determination is unbreakable. Not for a day does he hesitate. No matter what the doctors say, he wants to learn to walk again. But his path has many ups and downs. There were times at GF Strong where I felt like I couldn't push myself any harder and I just felt like giving up. But Mike's perseverance and determination has paid off. Look at me, can you believe I'm doing this? Can you believe I'm, 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 I'm walking on this, I'm doing this exercise? In the most literal sense, Mike fights his way back, step by step. And just a few months after his accident, his progress has far exceeded the doctor's predictions. Today, I'm fortunate to say that my current mobility is really good. I've had a miraculous recovery from spinal cord injury. I have some dexterity issues in my hands and numbness below my waist that makes things like balance and coordination challenging. But I have access to all the muscle groups and uh, live a, quite a regular able-bodied life. With, with a spinal cord injury. Mike Shaw is aware of how lucky he has been and wants to give something back. A year, four months, and 17 days ago, they told me I probably wouldn't ever walk again. That was just the challenge I needed. So not even a year and a half after his devastating accident, he is taking part in the Wings for Life World Run, not in a wheelchair, but on his own two legs. The Wings for Life World Run is a cause that I can get behind 100%. Here we go, it begins. A top athlete will always remain a top athlete. That quickly becomes clear. It's starting to get harder. Every single step seems like a small miracle, but Miracle Mike Shaw ran a few kilometers longer. Oh. <laughs> is that it, am I done? Thank you, Wings for Life. I'm standing by the 10K marker because that's how far I made it today. And together, we're going to make it happen. Spinal cord injury is curable. Can't wait to see how far I can go next year. For the next moment, we travel to Northern Europe and a young up-and-coming runner from Norway. Things I love about running and that motivates me, it's that I always want to be better and I want to set new personal records. Since I'm a long distance runner, most of my training is running. So I run between 100 and 150 Ks a week. In 2014, Elise Molvik, who was only 18 years old at the time, heard at short notice that there was to be a worldwide charity run. I was in really good shape and I, it was such a good running day. We actually signed up the day before the race. So sometimes the most spontaneous runs are the best. What no one not even Elise herself suspects at the time it is to be the day in the life of the schoolgirl from Norway. But the kilometers go by in a flash, and Elise runs and runs and runs. I plan to run 20 k's. After I passed the, the marathon, I was like, when is the car coming? When is the car coming? And it was never coming. So I was like, oh. When they said, you're first the woman, I was so... Uh, I get so much adrenaline that I just keep 
keep running. <laughs> and the adrenaline doesn't just give her the race win in Norway. In the end, she covers over 54 kilometers and is crowned the winner among all the women worldwide. Elise Molvik is the global champion. Yeah, I mean, that's a very impressive performance. And the associated prize was incomprehensible for the student. She got to go on a worldwide trip. I actually got shocked. I was like, uh, is this for real? Because uh, so big, yet uh, get this whole trip and everything, it's, it's really great. Tomorrow we're going to Cape Town, and then Hong Kong, uh, Sydney, Hawaii, uh, Los, Los Angeles and Rio. Registered only shortly before the start and winning a trip around the world. Participating in the Wings for Life World Run was more than worth it for Elise Molvik. And our last moment goes to a Swiss man who never gives up. I was the Abgesprung vom Mini Trampolin. It was a dreifach salto. And then I was unglücklich gelandet. And it had sich angefühlt wie ein Schlag auf den Kopf. Ja, ich, ich bekam keine Luft mehr und dann kam absolute Panik auf. Ich realisierte, was ungefähr passiert ist, keine genaue Diagnose, aber dass das äh, nichts Triviales sein würde. Und da war für mich schon ein großer Schritt, für mich persönlich zu entscheiden, ich mache weiter. And this attitude to life has been driving him from the beginning. For David, standing still means a step backwards. Day after day, he works hard in rehab for seven long months and another 15 months in outpatient therapy. Until he hears about a new kind of study, which in the best case scenario, could help him walk again one day. Wenn man die Stimulation einschaltet, gibt es ein kribbelndes Gefühl, so ja, wie wenn die Beine eingeschlafen sind und langsam wieder aufwachen. Ähm, es ist am Anfang etwas unangenehm, aber mit der Zeit äh, versteht man, dass genau dieses Gefühl dann das ist, was äh, die Motorik ermöglicht, wenn man mit der Amplitude dann hoch genug geht. In the so-called Stimotherapy, the spinal cord is electrically stimulated. Although scientists do not fully understand the mechanism, the stimulation seems to awaken the dormant spinal tissue below the level of injury. Die ersten Schritte, da habe ich mich noch gehalten. Das war noch nicht so spektakulär. Richtig cool wurde es, als ich wirklich hands-free gehen konnte. Das war schon ein großartiges Gefühl. Ja. It is David's irrepressible will that moves people to tears. His story goes around the world when he participates in the Wings for Life World Run in Switzerland and covers an astonishing 390 meters on his own two feet. Es war strenger, als ich gedacht habe. Wir haben spezielle Bedingungen hier mit dem, mit dem Konfettiregen, mit dem Weissen. Aber es ist cool, es gehört dazu. Und äh, bergauf, das habe ich noch selten gemacht. In der Klinik war es immer gerade aus. Ähm, wow, gutes Feeling. <lacht>